Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, somebody give God praise this morning. Come on, with the fruits of feeling that somebody just exalts his name this morning. It's a good day. It's an awesome day to be in the presence of the Lord. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Great things he has done. Just in your own words while we stand where we are. Let's just exalt his name together. Let's exalt him. Let's exalt him. Let's magnify him. Somebody's go ahead and glorify him. What can we What can we Come on. It's church time. It's, it's worship time. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Exalt him. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus.
to enter the presence of God. It is important that you make it count. When there is an opportunity to get in the presence of God to worship, it is very important to make that precious and special opportunity count. So you might not be in the sanctuary right now, but you might be in your home, you might be in your kitchen, you might be in your car. I want you to take another 30 seconds and just allow this moment to come. And just allow this worship to seep into the inner recesses of your being and cause you to know that somewhere deep down, your heart cries out to God and you are lifting him up because you're grateful. When you get an opportunity in the presence of God, make it count for something. Make your worship count for something. Nobody has to be watching. Nobody has to be impressed. Nobody has to be talking about it. It's between you and God. You might just be alone, 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 but allow your opportunity in His presence to count for something. What a great God we serve. What a great God. God bless you this morning. God bless you. I'm going to be talking to you for a few minutes this morning from the book of Psalm. Before I get there, there are two things I want to tell you. I want to tell you that on June 14th, both in this service and at 5 o'clock on Zoom in the evening, we will be honoring, celebrating, acknowledging our graduates. We would like for you to be mindful of that. And those who are graduating from our ministry, please call our offices and give them your name and information so we are able to acknowledge you appropriately. So that's June 14th in our 9 o'clock service. And at 5 o'clock in the evening on Zoom, you will be, we'll be celebrating, acknowledging, and just giving thanks for our graduates. Then on Tuesday of this week, I like to declare national holidays. We just declared a national month the other day, the other day that was for Dr. Webster. That was a whole month we declared. But on June, uh, on, the, on, the, on Tuesday this week, the patriarch of our church, uh, Elder Roy Lewis, who is the patriarch of our ministry, We'll be celebrating 95 years. And I, I tell you the truth, we got to find some way to celebrate. Uh, the, the last time I saw him, he looked stronger than his children and certainly more alert than his grandchildren. Well, praise God. <laughs> but we want them to know that they should tell the elder we are celebrating with him, we are rejoicing with him, and we know that God has been good to him. No matter what happens, we are rooting for the hundred, Elder. Don't, don't, don't mess with that now. Don't mess with that plan. We have every intention of celebrating the hundred. So you keep batting. We are with you. Amen. 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 The 91st first Psalm, I want to take a brief moment just to share with you from that this morning. Thank all of you for tuning in. We are so grateful that you have taken time out to join our ministry this morning. And trust that you have been blessed by the worship ministry and now hopefully a word from the Lord will come to impact your life and spirit won't you pray for us as we do that the 91st Psalm reading the verses 1 through 7 you look with me the Bible says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him will I trust surely the psalmist says he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and butler. Oh, thank God. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, for the destruction, nor for the destruction that Wasted at noonday, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. <laughs> well, praise God. 
a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. <laughs> wow, I like the confidence of the psalmist. It shall not come near to you. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We pray that you would influence my mind and challenge our spirit as we share your word, look into your word, that there will be revelation we have not yet discovered which will come to our spirit. And out of this will grant us, we will find boldness, we will find courage and strength to face our tomorrows. We give you thanks and praise for Christ's sake. Amen and amen. I want to talk to you about a theme which is dear to my heart. We have celebrated this for many years. And I want to talk to you from that context this morning. His presence, my fortress. Uh -huh. His presence, my fortress. The psalm before us has no title and has been ascribed no author, according to Bible scholars. They conclude that as the custom was, the author is most likely the author of the previous psalm, which in this case makes it Moses. It is however agreed upon by most that the 91st psalm finds its place among the most excellent pieces of work of its kind. I would agree with the scholars on that, that this piece of writing finds itself among the most excellent pieces of writing of its kind in the scripture. Dr. Adam Clark says, it is impossible to imagine anything more solid, more beautiful, more profound, or more uh, uh, animated than the 91st Psalm. It's impossible to think of anything more beautiful, more solid, more profound, or animated than this piece of writing. The consolation expressed in the Psalm could only be echoed by one with an intimate knowledge of the ability of the Lord to care for his own with unquestionable loyalty. It's only a man who knows the heart and loyalty of God could speak the way this psalm is speaking. Charles Spurgeon says that those who through rich grace obtain unusual and continuous communion with God so as to abide in Christ and Christ in them become possessors of rare and special benefits. Woo! Those who draw near to God, the psalmist says, will discover in God that they are blessed and guaranteed rare and special blessing. You have now got to stop and examine your life to see if your life is possessing rare blessings, special blessings, are just common. And that's where the difference comes between religiosity and Christianity. You've heard me te teach that during the week. That common blessing is to all. But rare blessing comes to the committed to Christ. Oh my friend, you cannot count the sun as rare blessing. You cannot count rain as rare blessing. Oh my friend, atheists and compliment grass and animals are entitled to that. But rare blessing, my friend, is found in the presence of God where men and women who have made a commitment to Christ rest in his presence. And because of that commitment, God grants them blessings that cannot be destroyed. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God for this. Oh, the great man says, those who through rich grace obtain unusual and continuous communion with God, the grace of God helps us, aids us to stay in his presence. And abiding there, we find that Christ also abides with us. And then we become the possessors through the grace of God and the blessings of Christ of rare and special blessings. The psalm began with a very assertive declaration, one full of confidence and loaded with hope. Oh, listen to what it says. Full of confidence and loaded with hope. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Good God. It is full of confidence and hope, not speculating. This is the voice of a man who knows his God. The question is, my friend, do you know God enough to be confident in the echoes of your testimony? Hmm. 
Wow, it does not matter. It does not matter what you face, my friend. The psalmist says that if you dwell, that it began and, and, and leaves the believer full of hope. That the believer is blessed to know that his God is, is, is faithful and his God is unchanging in his commitment to him. The psalm declared the secret place as a gateway to God, the care and protection. Oh, my friend, no common man can find it. No religious man who merely just swing his way into a measure, measure of religiosity can find it. It's a committed life which finds that place and know that God is real in him. You see, the secret place, my friend, represents one that is, is near to God. Therefore, the psalm properly understood, reads properly understood, will tell you that this is a special place for God. So the psalm declares the secret place as a gateway of God, the care and protection, and upon which Spurgeon further states that only those who possess the love of God in Christ in them and for whom to live is Christ finds themselves in that secret place. Only those who possess the love of God in their heart and who makes it their life duty to say for me to live is Christ can find themselves there. A man who is not sold out to Christ cannot find himself in the secret place for he will drag with him the burdens of sin into the sacred presence of God. A man who has forsaken sin and committed his life to Christ, my friend, will find an open door to the presence of God, where God will bless him with anointing and strength to talk about the goodness of God in the face of the heathen. Hmm. It is to them only, the great man continues, that the veil is rent, the mercy seat is revealed, the covering cherubs are, are, are manifest and the awful glory of the Most High is apparent. Only in the presence of God can you find the glory of God and the protection from angels and the power of His Spirit. Only in the presence of God. It takes a worshiper. Come on, sir. Oh, good God Almighty, my friend. It takes a solo worshiper, not a part-time worshiper, a worshiper whose life is given to God and every day and every day of the week he will find, my friend, the presence of God to be exact to his life. My God, I want to teach somebody today. Oh, Woo. oh my friend, it is, says Brother Spurgeon, the only, it is to only them that the veil, the veil is rent, the mercy seat is revealed, the covering cherubs are, are manifest and the awful glory. Oh, how do you refer to the, the glory of God as awful? Because to a man who is unredeemed, he will find himself dead in the presence and glory of God. But for those who are redeemed, the glory of God is their covering. Can I teach somebody today, my friend? That which covers the believer will destroy the ungodly. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Oh, my friend, the, the presence of God becomes the fortress of the believer. The secret place represents one's nearness to God. The secret place represents one ne one's nearness to God. Therefore, the psalm properly understood reads, He that remains in a closeness to God, regardless of obstacles, regardless of obstacles, or he who makes God his habitation, shall live in the shadow of the Almighty. He who makes God his habitation and will not change because he's facing stuff will find himself covered by the shadow of the Almighty. My oh my friend, my oh my friend, the Bible teaches in Luke's documentation that when the apostles got the Holy Spirit on their lives, they were walking past men sitting by the way and their shadows passed over them and the power of God came upon them and they got up. Oh my friend, this is what we are talking about, I fear the presence of God. This is what we are talking about, that when we get close to God, the presence of God becomes a shadow which drives out our fears, kills our infections, give us strength when we are getting weak. Oh my friend, all we need is to draw close to God and the shadow of the Almighty will protect us. Oh, do I have time to tell you more about this? Do I have time to tell you a little more? He who resorts to God with selfless reliance in times of danger and of difficulty, says Matthew Poole, shall not be disappointed of his hope. 
but shall find a quiet and safe response of the divine protection. God will not always be loud and rebunctious when he wants to bless you. He will bless you in secret so that you can show his glory in open and men and brethren shall learn that our God is real, our God is tremendous, and our God is faithful. The word shadow literally means care. Therefore, he who dwells in the presence or secret place of his God finds himself under the divine care. Divine care, I say, of his God. This is no ordinary thing. A, a, a man who serves God, no matter what he goes through, uh, he obligates God to divine protection and divine care. If a man keeps worshiping God, he obligates God to his condition, and God is obligated to respond, no matter where he finds himself or what he's faced with. For the presence of God is a refuge, the fortress, good God, uh, of, of the people of God. Each verse, each verse in this psalm, I will not have time to exegete them all, but I'm having a good time teaching this word this morning. I hope you are getting this in your spirit. Every verse seems to begin with a statement of consolation. Uh -huh. Each becoming more reassuring than the other. As you read the psalm, you'll find how it begins. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then he went on to talk about the stuff which blesses the people. So let me say this to you. He that dwelleth or makes a conscious effort to live in the presence of the Lord, the psalmist implies. Here, a great, uh, the psalmist says, implies a great difference between a visitor and a resident. A tremendous difference between a resident and a visitor. It means that you make a tremendous difference between the religious and the converted. Oh God, I want to teach this morning. Oh my friend, this is not for everybody. This psalm does not address everybody. It addresses the residents of the presence of God, not the visitor. Oh glory to Almighty God. Oh, my friend, indicating that the privileges are not equally shared. A man cannot just be religious that visits the church in the presence of God and gets the blessing equal to those who are sold up and committed. That is not how God works. A man gets the blessings and the covers of God. If he lives in the presence of God, he who visits gets common blessing. He who lives gets special blessing. Hmm. That he who merely visits the presence of the Lord for the mere sake of religious exercises simply runs, uh, uh, my friend, in for occasional stops at the mercy seat of Christ. But he who dwells or abides become a trusting servant, communicating with his God to the realization of rare and special blessing. A man cannot live in the presence of God and don't talk to God, but a man can visit the presence of God and don't talk to him. Do I have somebody to teach, my friend? Visitors don't have to communicate, but those who are residents must talk. Oh, God Almighty, and when you live in the presence of God and you talk to God, God will talk back to you. Do I have somebody to teach on the other end of this microphone? If you want to hear from God, my friend, make his presence your residence. Live there and talk to him from there and he will talk to you. If you're only visiting, he's under no obligation to say anything to you. Come on, sir. Oh, God Almighty, man. You cannot obligate God to his miracles if you're merely passing him by. But if you live on his footstool, you obligate him, my friend, to open heaven to you. Can I teach somebody this word this morning to help you? He who lives in the presence of God finds joy in the midst of pandemics and open up a trust in God which reveals to him that God will move mountains for his blessings. Don't you sit there and dread your surrounding and dread the news of the stories. You know in whom you have believed. You know he's faithful and able. Your God will see you through. No situation can come your way which will break your spirit when you live in the presence presence, in the presence of Almighty God. Do I have someone to talk to this morning? Ouch, ouch, ouch. I feel the presence of God. Come on, Bishop, teach it. Wake out of your slumber, knowing whom you have believed. Make be a tent in the presence of God. Live there, and he will talk to you. Good God, I'm watching this time. 
Oh man, he who dwells in the presence of God enjoys a nearness to God, which can only be produced by residence and not visitation. Nearness. He who dwells in the secret, the place, the place, the, the place kept secret from the enemy. Mm -hmm. You see, my friend, if you live in the presence of God, that's where the enemy has to come there to find you. If you visit, you normally come in and walk back out to him. But if you live here, he has to make his way there to find you. And the last time the enemy checked, my friend, he realized that he is no match for the presence. For he who lives here, my friend, is in a secret hiding place. Can I tell you that when you live in the presence of God, the enemy cannot know your spirit. He cannot know what you think. He cannot predict the outcome of your life. For God covers you under his shadow. And when you walk, you walk in his presence. My friend, you, if you live in the presence of God, you carry his address with you. That's good. That's good, sir. When the enemy stops you and check you, he'll find out where you live. He just say, go on, I can't handle you. When you are visit a man, the devil walks with you, he messes you up. You can't visit God and expect to have child protection. When you live with God, you get child protection. You are child proof in the glory of God when you live in the presence of God. Oh, can I can I ask you to do me a favor then? Uh, if you happen to see me, I live in the presence of God. Don't sympathize with me, just pray my strength. You see, what I'm going through, I have to come out. So sympathy will not help me. I just need for you to pray my I wish, I wish I had a witness. I wish I had a if you see me walking, look like I'm listening, look like I'm tired, don't sympathize with me. What I'm going through is set up by my God to strengthen me. I have to come out. All I'm asking you to do is pray my strength because you see there's a door to everything I'm locked in because I live in the presence of God. I've got to come out. In this pandemic, there are some things I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. There are some things the enemy has set up to break you. But look at you today because of where you live. He can only set it up, but it can't take effect. You don't understand. He can only set it up, but even he knows he can't take effect because you see, you go and cause a resident. Visitors get knocked. You go home full. So he that dwelleth in the secret. Okay, can I run on a little bit? He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. That's what he said. So hear what he said in verse 2. So as a result of my experience in that, I don't have any time, elders. I don't have any time. I will say of the Lord, I will make it my duty. I will speak boldly. I will get up and say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Uh -huh. I know what the enemy is saying. I know what I've been through. I know what I'm going through. But I want you to listen to me today. I am speaking a declaration that is so. I might look like I'm busted. I might look like I'm bruised. I might look like I'm discouraged. But I'm saying to you today, the Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my refuge. I know I will come out. I know where I'm hiding. And I know I'm going to make it. I will commit myself and my affairs to God and open and share my experience with the ungodly that the God they refuse to trust is my fortress and that nothing the world throws at me will cause me not to trust him. I will declare openly today that the world can throw nothing at me not to trust him because my God knows my future. He knows everywhere, everything about me. You see, my friend, it is in times of difficulty, says the Psalms, that he will call upon his personal experience with his God and not just trust him in the particular situation, but we commit to trust him always. What he said is, in these times, I recall some things I've been through. <laughs> uh -huh. one, of the, one of the believers' greatest challenges, lots of memory. Having a difficulty remembering what God has done so that he becomes fearful in the present. But if you can remember some things God brought you out of and did it so well that right now you can't even remember it and you can't feel it, you will begin to think that the enemy can show me nothing and do me nothing.
happening that will cause me not to trust this God. Why? Because I've been this way before and he has done it in my life before. So there's nothing which can come my way that God will not find a way and make it worthwhile for his glory and for my victory. You can't keep forgetting what God has done. You can't keep forgetting the setup people set you up to fail. The lies they told on you. The jobs they want you to lose. But look at you now. Look at what God did because you, you moved into his presence. You gave up your old address and moved to his presence to live. And when the enemy starts coming, they can just come to the gate, but not into the driveway. I wish I had a witness to talk to today. And because they can't get across the gate, then God protects you. Look at you now. Oh, my friend, the world is falling apart, but look at you. The world is falling apart around you, but it shall not come near you. It shall not destroy you. Why? Because of where you live. You live in the presence. Yeah. I want to show you something. There was a time in your life when you were the receiver. Because yeah. things were tough and your residence was not made up in God. But in this pandemic, look at you now. You are the giver. You are the blessing. You are the encourager. When everything is falling apart, look at you. <laughs> you ought to run, oh, boy, oh, oh, boy. You ought to run. And in times of difficulty, say the psalmist, that uh, we call on our personal experience. I will say without physical proof here this Sabbath. I will say without physical proof that he is my protection and stronghold. I will say boldly without having any physical proof to show you. Because of my experience and because of what I believe. I will say he is my stronghold. I will say in the midst of a pandemic that he is my provider and the regulator of my mind to maintain in the midst of confusion. I will say the reason I haven't lost my mind is because this God is the regulator of my mind. And when confusion comes, he sorts it out and gives me a good thought and keeps me hoping. Wow. Oh, my friends, I respect the goodness of the Lord because he has availed himself before in times of uncertainty and discouragement. He has rescued me before and I can prove it. I want you to know that this God has rescued me before. And I can prove it. Hear me. This God has rescued me before. And I have proof. <laughs> I have proof that my God is a way maker. That my God is a deliverer. That my God rescues his people. I have proof. Surely. Surely. Surely the psalmist says. Do I have time just to tell you this one and get out of your way? Surely the psalmist says. He shall deliver you. Surely, uh, he said in the psalmist, he said, this is my experience, and I come to tell you, if you trust him to it, it will be yours. So the psalmist said, so surely, he shall deliver thee. If you will trust him like I do, says the psalmist, he also will deliver you. But he will, but he who reaps this benefit must be a resident in the great presence and not a visitor. He who will reap the benefit of the deliverance of God must be a resident yeah. in his presence yes. and not a visitor. Uh -huh. Not only will he deliver you from the condition of challenge, but from the misleading and discouraging communications from unbelievers and doubters. He will not cause you to be malicious towards people, but he will protect your mind from negative thoughts and discouraging words, so it will not affect your trust. <laughs> Jesus, what a God. He will allow you to discern the subtlety and, and suddenness of those who will be used of the enemy to unexpectedly derail your faith in him. Those who would pounce on you and give you advice that is not godly because you live in his presence. He will protect your mind and give you discernment so you can know that whether it is good or bad, you will be protected by God in mind, body, and soul. Sam so says, surely, I tell you the truth, he says, or oh, surely, surely, my God will deliver you from the cunningness of the enemy and from the influence of his angels. Surely, he will deliver you. Oh, let me take two more minutes and tell you, he shall cover thee. Uh, he says, he shall cover thee. In verse 4, he tells you, he shall cover thee. 
He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings. Mm -hmm. He shall cover thee with a hedge of protection in which your mind and heart will be safe from the enemy's attack. Oh, in the presence of God, man, there is covering. There is covering from an unseen enemy. You go to the presence of God and this mighty presence which is invisible to the mortal eyes protects you from an invisible enemy. He will cover you like a hand covers her young ones. It represents a comprehensive coverage, my friends. Uh -huh. He protects the believer from above, around, and beneath. He will carry the trusting believer on the strength of his shoulders and uses his truth as our shield. He will cause the word of God to be the shield for our trust that when the enemy pounces upon us, we will recall his word and say, this is what God says, and I believe God, who are you? Mm -hmm. Oh, my friend. His words will be recalled to our minds as promises to be fulfilled to our trust in Him. Our experience in Him will remind us that we can trust His promises and therefore, no matter our challenges, we will not doubt or waver in our faith. We have been there before. We know what God can do. We will get through this and we'll get through it with a praise and a testimony. Our God can. Our God has. Our God will. Our God has done it before. Good God am I. Let me tell you this. I tell you, my friends, if you will trust him, says this eyes, he will cover you, meaning he will protect and provide for you in the midst of danger and of famine. If you trust him, if you trust him, he will protect you and he will provide for you in the midst of danger. You see, my friend, the glory of God shines best in the believer when there are challenges and when there is famine. Uh -huh. The truth of God shines best when hopelessness is rising up and all men are giving up and the believer finds a reason to stand because his God comes through every time. Oh, I want to stop by to tell you my time running out. I serve a God who cannot fail. I serve a God who does not know how to fail. I serve a God who is immortal, invisible, who is wise, who is omnipotent, omniscient, who is great, who is mighty, who is wonderful, who is awesome. That's the God I serve. Oh, he is Jehovah. He is almighty. He is Yahweh. He is Elohim. Oh, my friend, he is God. I don't know where you are. And where you're listening from, but I want to implore you. I want to pounce upon you. I want to challenge you. I want to just hit it into your mind that you can't, you can't afford not to trust God, not at this juncture of your life. You can't afford not to believe in God. You can't afford not to live in His presence. You can't afford to be a visitor to the presence of God. You need to be a resident in His presence so that His glory can cover you and His hand can undergird you. There are just some things in your life you can't afford. I close by telling you I really am out of time. I close by telling you thou shalt not be afraid. This Sabbath says, gotta close here now. So thou shalt not be afraid. Don't be afraid of anything. So when you begin to trust God and live in his presence, don't let fear get a hold of you about anything. No matter how it looks, don't be afraid of it. Just know that God can fix it. Just set your mind at God and be resolute about, the, about destroying what is coming up against you and before you know it, it has to break. When the believer trusts God, he obligates God to deal with his situations. See, a man who trusts in the Lord shall not be afraid of the dark times of life. A man who trusts God shall not be afraid and must not be afraid of the dark times of life. It is in the darkness that the ills of life are portrayed. But he who trusts in the Lord will go to sleep in the quietness of that trust, knowing that his soul and physical care is in the hand of the Lord. The believer will rest quietly when the unbeliever is tossing and turning. The believer will rest knowing that tomorrow belongs to his God. And if tomorrow belongs to his God, whatever his God owns, he owns. Tomorrow, my friend, does not control me. I control it because my God controls it. And what my God owns is in subjection to me. 
Glory to God. The enemy can do nothing but to stop my tomorrow from shining. I might have some setbacks, but my friend, my setbacks cannot destroy me. Someday I lose those, my stepping stone to my breakthrough if I keep trusting my God. Gotta get out of your way. Gotta get out of your way. You see, you will have need to live in fear of nothing. For your trust in the Lord will pay big dividends. Your trust in God will pay big dividends. To be afraid is to is the defeat of faith. But to trust in the Lord produces unspeakable blessings. To be afraid is the defeat of faith. But to trust in the Lord produces unspeakable blessings. The apostle says, and I close, good Lord. According to Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 10. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels. <laughs> that the excellency of the power may, may be of God and not of us. The excellency of the authority over our situations may be of God, not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Isaiah said in Isaiah 4, 43, 2 and 3, When the passes through the waters, can I leave you with that? When the passes through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. That's the word of the Lord, sir. That's the word of the Lord. That is the word of the Lord. When the passes through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame keep upon thee. That's the word of the Lord. That's the, for I am the Lord thy God. The Holy One of Israel. I am your Savior. What I have said, I have said. If you believe me, there will come to pass in your life. The things I have spoken, I have spoken. No man can change them. No man can turn them back. Walk in them. Live in my presence. And they will come to pass in your life. Won't you get up in your spirit? Won't you get up in your home? Won't you get up in your mind? And walk in the word of God. And you will find out that no matter what the enemy sends your way. You will be strong. You will be resolute. You will be victorious. Because your God cannot fail. And he will not fail you. The word of the Lord says. I am the Lord thy God. The Holy One of Israel. And I am your savior. And nothing which comes against you shall harm you because you are under my shadow and my presence is your fortress. I would to God that you bow your head with me all the time. I'm really all the time. I'm really all the time. I would to God you bow your head with me and I pray this word minister to you. If you were blessed by this word today, I want you to send a note to us. Send a word of encouragement. Let us know that we are ministering to you and we are holding you. Send it on our Facebook platform, on our website, wherever you can minister. You minister to us by sending us messages that we are ministering to you. And we thank God for you. Father, we thank you today for your presence being our fortress. The place of hiding for the redeemed. That no enemy from hell can enter and destroy our spirit or, or destroy our hope. Thank you for your strength in this season. Thank you for your comfort. For all our people, wherever they are. All those who are affiliated with our ministries, whose hope are high, we pray you'll cover them today. And all believers everywhere, we pray for a touch upon their life. Minister today, bring salvation to those who are not saved and encouragement to those who are wounded in spirit. And we give you thanks and praise for Christ's sake. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for joining today. Trust that you are blessed by the word. I invite you to join me on Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock on the Facebook platform as we begin to teach God's word again. I want you to share this word with somebody. Tell them if this blessed you. Send it to your neighbor. Get them to be encouraged. God bless you much. Keep praying for us. We love you and appreciate you. We are in the heaven of worship team. Enjoy this song as we depart this time. God bless you. Have a great day. Your worship.
Oh